Hey, Tommy. How's it going? Thank you so much for doing this again. I really Absolutely. appreciate My it. My pleasure. Dude, I've been checking out more and more of your shit. You're incredible. Oh, man. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. Really? Like, like the singing, everything, just spot on. Oh, man. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's sick. I recommend everybody watching to go on a deep dive. Uh, you, will, you will be changed. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, awesome. awesome so my laughing. idea my idea was to like dig into the discography kind of from the beginning and just you know we don't have to like it's not like i expect everything to be transcribed note for note from like the beginning of his career but just kind of like touch on the songs talk about some of the things like one thing that i noticed like love struck and pride and joy it's sort mm -hmm. of like he has one sound throughout the entire tune like if it's like a tube screamer it's kind of like for the riff and for the solo and it's like a lot of guys in rock kind of use their pedals to like build you know what i mean like they yeah. add something add 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 and like in the solo they right. build that way but he's sort of like writing the whole song the comping the soloing yeah with yeah, song. yeah you know stevie's setup especially in the beginning was very simple pure and simple you know for for a while he didn't even use any pedals you know he yeah. just had a, a couple of fender amps or a fender and a marshall uh combo like i'm, I'm talking about early stuff yeah, like, like before like the first pre pre-1983 or 82 yeah. you know it's like a bit before uh he had a like a vibroverb or two vibroverbs and uh and and he didn't even start using a tube screamer until about i, I want to say 1980 81 something like that so how do you get that level of compression without like you have to play loud i'm guessing well he dimed those fender amps yeah <laughs> those yeah. those amps were loud i mean yeah. there's a there's a video and anybody can look it up it's on youtube the texas tornado jam from 1980. okay that's one of the earliest videos that you can find of stevie and uh it's it's like an outdoor festival and he's wearing this red red coat and it looks like it's the middle of the summer because everybody in the crowd are wearing <laughs> bathing suits and shorts. <laughs> right? and, and Stevie's up there, you know, with his hat on and the, 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 the red, it looks like some wool material. And yeah. he's like, you know, tearing it up like Colin Shuffle and uh, Little Wing. And that's the yeah. only footage that I've, I've found from from that era. That era. So, is that, but that's no two, pedals, just amps. No pedals, no tube screamer. It's two vibra verbs, one cable. Wow. And just crank the hell out of it. And on the recording, you can hear that the guitar was blasting. I mean, you can't when when the camera's on Stevie's side, you can't hear the band. Yeah. At all. I mean, <laughs> that's the way it should be. It was loud. <laughs> that's the way Feel it should those be. Amps. And the and the amps had no grill. Yeah, you took the grill off, and and it, you can see it that, like those speakers were probably right. JBLs or something like I don't know what he was using at the time, but yeah, they were huge. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, cool. But so anyway, that's a uh, long story short. That uh, that's kind of the the setup that he used at, at the studio, you know, because for the recording of Texas Flood, he actually used uh, part of Jackson Brown's. Uh, equipment yeah because they recorded in california right mm -hmm. so that's yeah, like jackson the brown jackson studio. brown had like a dumble right so it's like yes yeah. that, that was the 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 dumble land amp uh, -huh. uh what stevie used and i think that's why he was gravitated uh to the the, the dumble amps yeah because, uh, jackson browns so that was yeah. only the dumble and and one vibroverb at the studio and that's it and 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 you can hear when he hits uh, the tube screamer for pride and joy and uh, you know a couple of tunes yeah but overall it was a very very simple um setup and yeah i know that for post uh production mixing and stuff they actually used a uh, uh, roland dimension d yeah yeah i have that which in. was very popular at the time because prince used it mm -hmm. for purple rain it's just a very very slow nice uh course mm -hmm. effect yeah yeah it's you can, uh you can kind of hear that in pride and joy and and some other songs sure uh, it's, it's sort of it's sort of mixed almost like sits with the reverb right it's like yeah the yeah way they yeah. have it because it's everything's yeah. like way post so it's like it's uh -huh. not the same as putting it in your chain right it's like exactly it's very subtle yeah yeah very cool um 
Cool. So can we talk a little bit about love struck just on a technical note, like tons of double stop, a lot of downstrokes. Yeah, a lot of downstrokes. So the, you know, the basic rhythm uh, is uh, pretty much like a Chuck Berry song, mm -hmm. right? So, so he was doing this. So the, the one very important thing about the, uh, the strumming or the, the rhythm part. Of it. So you have the, you know, the five, the fifth, the sixth, but then the, the, the when he adds the seventh, that happens right here oh. on, the, on the D string. So instead of extending, you know, reaching to, you know, I this no part, idea. he actually was for the third beat, you know. You, you, no you, way. He's, he's, he's doing a triplet, or uh, not triplet, or a triplet. Yeah, yeah. So, so the pattern will be one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. So it's like. Same thing on the four and the five. With that's the crazy. E7 at the close, right? That's, uh, that's fucking crazy. Wait, wait, so, in terms of pickup selection, are you in position two or four? Two. Uh, whichever you want to call it, two or yeah. four. Yeah. It's the, the quack with yeah. the bridge. Right? So that's very... And it's all downstrokes? So the thing is, the mostly is downstrokes, uh, except except sometimes you, you strum up like that. So it's like... So it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and. Ah. Or one, two, three, and, one, two, three, and. You can do that. Hey. And you go four. Oh, sorry. Four again. So the, the, the most of the time, you know, he's just doing this, you know, a lot of that, again, Chuck Berry, Johnny Be Good, if you, if you know that song, if you learn that song at some point, you know, if you, of course, if you're a guitar player, um, you, you will know the, the fundamentals of Yeah, music. but it's, okay, so, so like in terms of the strumming mm -hmm. pattern, yeah. so... That's so foreign to me. My God, I never even thought it's anything like that. And when you're doing the upstrokes, it's like up, up, like end, end, like doom, ba, 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 up. Da, da. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes up, up. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Ah, okay. That, the yeah, it takes a little bit to, to get into your system. Yeah, but uh, I think the best way to to get it started, just work on the right hand or the yeah. strumming. Hand. So you go like. So you're really putting that two and four in there. So it's like down, 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 up. Yeah, but you you have these accents where the snare sits. Yeah, or the, you can do the yeah. double upstroke too. So, so the, can you do that? Can you just the right hand alone for a second? Yeah. So it's like. Uh, Yeah, 
Yeah, you really have to articulate those. Sick. One and two and three and four and uh, one and two and three and four and so Yeah, but two. you're also like putting in those like two and four like snare drum heads like two. Yeah. Ka -ta 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 -ta. Absolutely. Ka -ta -ta -ta. And, and Stevie Ka -ta -ta. was so amazing about you know the the his his percussive right hand. It's so amazing to me that a lot of times you know when you hear him just him by himself without the band playing, it's almost like he is the really drums, the drum part. Yeah. You know. One hundred percent. Just the, uh, the the way he emphasized some of those beats is just so cool. Yeah, no, that that's. I mean, the, you can almost hear the drums in your head. Yeah, absolutely. No, when you when you broke into the, first of all, like that intro that is like no 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 no. How how does he finger? It's just like the minor pentatonic boxer. Yeah, so it starts on a five, right? Right. And I believe that this is a, a four count. Ba 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 ba. So it's like. Oh. Upstrokes. The, the very first one is down. And from then on, up, up. Yeah. So. Ba ba ba. Ba ba. When you so grab that double. That's like a diminished. Diminished, yeah. So he's, he's only doing the. Yeah. And uh, I used to do this form, you know, with the, the first three fingers. This. But then I realized that you have to redo it with these three because you need the first finger to keep it back to the room. I didn't hear that. It was three notes. That's crazy. Yeah. And you hear the root note. Open A. Yeah. Good. So you've listened to that recording quite a few times. <laughs> a few times. <laughs> when you when you're grabbing that note here. Yeah. That, that. That's yeah. just a single note at the top? Yeah, two notes here. But that's... A that's single note on the top, yes. And then... Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, and then here. Yeah, so you go... Oh, so it's with the muting, you're hitting... That with the open A. Yeah. And, you know, to and, and in terms of strumming, is, is it switching to downstrokes at that point? Yeah, On so. Yeah, so. Um, ah. Yeah, so I kind of switch to like an alternate. Yeah, so it's like it starts with an up, then alternate. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, man. I, I really want to get that. Ah, the, the, uh, yeah, I'll, and, get, I'll get the upstroke. I want to. So, I want to humiliate myself. I got one, four, five here. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And and if uh, if you ever watch like an old uh, fabulous Thunderbirds video, you can see Jimmy Vaughn doing the exact same thing yeah i mean that's obvious right <laughs> stevie yeah. learned it from jimmy right so, so now, and, and jimmy jimmy vaughn he, he was playing a, quite a lot of those type of songs you know yeah like very, very like rock and roll you know dance music yeah no it's they sick had, now when we get of, into the solos into the solo can we just break down a little bit of what's happening in the uh -huh. picking so um so it finishes with the uh you know the verse, so, 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 so yes. Yeah. 
So that's why even try. Why I like the, try, the record Nick. version. Why even try? Jesus Christ! Okay. But it's so it's so simple and it's kind of like repetitive. Like you're doing the same kind of. Well, well, what? You know, can, can you show us some of the right hand stuff that's happening there? It's it's just that, right? Like just. That. <laughs> So it's a lot of downstroke, downstrokes and, uh, and quite a lot of uh, alternate strumming. Yeah, but you're, you're in the Especially beginning, the, I, saw, I saw that you're starting. Yeah, I saw the... I saw... Watch out, because this is a. Yeah. It's not the, it's not the nine. Yeah, it's like a six nine. Yeah. I didn't know that. And once you get up to the. You know, you gotta oh, to the then floor, you right? have Yeah, and that's the uh, seven, right? Dominant. Yeah, yeah. We got, we got that one. But yeah. in the beginning, you, so, sorry to slow you down, but like in the beginning, by the way, this is all staying in that same quack position throughout right. the mm -hmm. throughout the solo. Yeah. Yeah, Position I mean, two? if you watch live versions, you know, he might go to the bridge pickup or the middle pickup usually, mm -hmm. but definitely stays a lot on the on the quack position. Okay, now I saw it starts with like a series of like kind of upstrokes, kind of like the intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Whenever he did that that uh, the double stop Chuck mm -hmm. Berry thing, you know, that was mostly down. Uh, I mean, upstrokes. Yeah. <laughs> It's so when you're doing upstrokes, you, you tend to like pr plant your wrist to do them. Well, you know, it's a weird thing because it took me forever to figure this thing out. Because I was like, the I was really upstrokes not, are so hard. I was really not good at upstroking. I was just sluggish and tense and slow, and you know, I was like, eh, so stiff. And it took me a while to get this motion. Like, how how do I speed up my my right hand? So it's mm -hmm. like just had to had to do this a bunch you know okay and you know i told you that last time i mentioned yeah that you're, you're left-handed then I'm, I'm a lefty so it's e even harder because i have to like kind of tense up in my arm mm -hmm. to, to be able to to move my my wrist this direction right yeah 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 so it's it takes a while and i mean it's possible if you if you practice a lot and long yeah. enough i believe that you can you can get there you can get better okay it's a it's just another motion you know it's just like the, the same exact thing that Biden mm -hmm. you know when when he does a, you know in the solo i'm just i'm just finding out it's upstrokes now trust me i, I just did a deep dive <laughs> okay so and then like uh -huh. That kind of thing. Yeah. Uh huh. So it start it starts with down and then ups, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he does those it, ba bam, you know. Yeah. The down, the down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then oh. what happens? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, let me let me try to slow it down, I guess. Uh, yeah. So I think I see a lot. Yeah, he's done a lot of like down, up, up, right? Like. Like, is there, there's a lot of down, up, up, like. Yeah, when you do that, like the. Yeah. It's alternate. Yeah, so down, up. Something that I think a lot of people find 
to be a big challenge is switching between single notes and double stops in the context of a line. And I see you do it kind of uh, like what what what's happening there physically, like when you're going between the single notes and the double stops in the context of that. Uh, it seemed like well, it wasn't all double stops. Like you had. That's the double stop. Okay. Get to the, the root note, that's a single note. So. In terms of left hand fingering, it's pinky here. Well, whichever, you know, you can yeah. do it by the. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's. You know, I can I can see that this is more of a convenience thing. Like it, you know, that sounds good. That sounds good too. And the same fret, right. you know, same. Yeah. You can do it by one one finger, right? Yeah. Using one finger. When it's so this descending double stop stuff, it's all downstrokes. You're not alternating. <laughs> Uh, you can you can use all. Okay. Uh, you know what? No, actually, for 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 me, I'm just so used to the upstrokes know, one direction. Or as, it looks like up up up, up down up up. I think you were doing up 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 down up up. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, I know. But I never dissected this song yet. Like, or the story, you know, like this, I've never gone this far. <laughs> I was, no, I've been just doing it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool, you know. But, really uh, this, this is what content all about. This is about people who are too lazy to do the work, talking to people who did it and don't understand what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I mean, it's not bragging, but uh, I, I, I did need years to figure all this thing out. Oh yes. You know, well, it sounds, you know, getting a deep, deeper like, into details and all that and picking direction and all that stuff, you know, it took me years to sure, sure, know, sure, sure, to polish it up. It's, okay, so can I we mean, run through it one more time and I'll find what to ask a question about? Sorry to make you do it. <clears throat> what the uh, the solo, the solo. Or? yeah, solo. okay, okay, so. <laughs> That thing. That thing. It's, it's pentatonic. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's alternating. Yeah, that's that's very simple. But it's like single notes to double stops. I feel like he went back to the. Oh! side it was chords interesting okay yeah, he, so he's catching those general and other stuff too i see yeah, and then so like the top of downstrokes on the top of the pentatonic with downstrokes upstrokes for the chords yeah yeah. yeah. So you just gotta walk it, walk it Think down. Oh. You, can, you can make it even more rich. Sound. I think I just understood something. Bigger. I never thought. Okay, I'm gonna have to work on that too. <laughs> okay. And, yeah, oh. and and you know he's he was playing a lot with the. Yeah. I mean it's kind of like a boogie woogie uh, piano lick. The piano right? part, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I play a lot with those. Yeah. I mean, that lick is yeah. in pride and joy. 
Yeah. Okay. Same now, thing. So before, before we dive into the to the next to the next thing. So mm -hmm. okay, there's the whole section here. Let's say we covered some of that. Then when he goes to the chords, you said that like he uses a lot of like I see like a lot of six nine chords. So for the A yeah. for the one chord, it's this voice. Yeah. yeah, and that's actually the last chord of the song. Mm -hmm. You know when he finishes the, which by the way the timing of the the last part, you know like the intro is is actually more straight. So it's like. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So it's that chord, that, that six nine. Very cool. And so in terms of voicings, there's just like this kind of like nine chord that you see. Then there's the rock up. Yeah, and yeah. also I love his later uh, live versions, like Daytona Beach, for example, uh, the the uh, the Riverboat from New Orleans, those shows, eight, 1987. Mm -hmm. Boy, he was on fire! Like yeah. he played he played those songs better than ever. Mm. I mean, after after you know he sobered up, he was just like about to blow up on stage. He was just so full of energy. And yeah. so he extended the songs. I used like jamming a lot in the yeah. song. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, that's... I, just, I, I, I sort of want to start doing cocaine just to get off it. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> uh, drink some coffee instead. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> there you go. I'll finish mine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. But yeah, that's that's when he was. Uh, I love that little thing that he he started doing the. And then. That... Yeah, he's doing that lick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty oh. You're just yeah. alternating there? Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, and um, yeah. So he, he really started doing some different things to that song. So it's the rhythm there and those kind of ba -ba 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 -ba, it's all downstrokes, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's up to you. I mean, it kind of works both ways. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sick. Awesome. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I, I I really appreciate that so much. Okay, of so course. I think maybe on a different episode we can dig into Pride and Joy because that feels like a bigger project. But what I really want is because you know, in the time we have something that always mystified me was the tremolo technique for like um dirty pool yeah and, um, and stuff like that yeah, yeah. um so like for the riff what's happening there rhythmically and technically like all that shit talking about that yeah yeah so again that was very tricky for me to figure out it's the same same exact deal right hand you know yeah, you you're lefty, a, you're a, you know, I've gotta I've gotta do something to be able to get faster. You're a right-handed player trapped in a left-handed body. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it's all relative. Like I mean I feel like this should be called left-handed because this is your dominant hand that's on the fretboard. Right. 
Well, I, they call it right handed because you're strong with the right hand. So. Right. But, but anyway, uh, that's that's really what you do. You just up and down, but and I, uh, I not see, just up and down, him, but he's sort of moving. When you see videos of him, sort of kind of getting close. Yeah, like doing that. Yeah, traveling. you 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 have to you have to kind of draw the the letter eight. H. Okay. So it's like it's it's got that that motion, right? All right. And you know, I'm kind of over exaggerating a lot, sure. right now, but but he was doing kind of small motions like this. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Yeah. Cool. So it's not okay. really one pattern. I'm just kind of going back and forth, but it's almost like a local. I, I see that. Right? Yeah. Okay. And the reason why he's moving back and forth is because it just kind of smoothens it out. So it's yeah. not just you know, up and down. It really has a tonal purpose. Yeah, you get like a little bit of shifting, like darker to brighter. With the uh huh. Pick. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I also noticed that it's a little bit easier to play all that shit when you're standing up. Like the angles sort of work themselves out to be a little bit better when your guitar is a little bit farther away from you. Yeah, I guess so. You you can move around a little bit more. Yeah, like. But Stevie, a lot, a lot of times he locked down his arm if you if you watch him doing that and then just like. Lock you know, down. use the, yeah, he, he kind of gets a lot down his arm. That a lot of times, you know, he's, you can tell, like, his, his body is, like, kind of, kind of stiffer. Yeah, it's weird, because I feel like a lot of modern guitar technique and people would sit at home, like, everything, it's, it's sort of like they're treating guitar like it's a yoga class. Like, everything has to be, like, relaxation, total relaxation, no tension. Not you know, with Steve Ray <laughs> yeah, it's just like, ah, not with or Albert like, King. Right, yeah. right. I put There's cocaine no relaxation. In my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got you to gotta bend those strings. You got to work your body. You got to play hard and floor it, as he used to say, right? Yeah. Yeah. Except yeah. for the, the heavy gate strings, because I'm not, I'm not struggling. And yeah. you know, everybody's different. We all yeah. are different uh, with different, uh, you know, physical abilities and all of that. Physical yeah. strength, right? Of course. So I, I used to I used to use uh, eleven to what whatever fifty. -ish. Did you ever? Did, were you ever on the trend of like real heavy strings? No, no. You're always just like fuck that. Too hard. Pretty much. Just, well, it's not that. It's too hard. It's just it uh, it's pointless. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I mean, th there are players that you can you can see, and you would not be able to tell what gauge strings they're using right of course like eric gales right you know he's playing beautifully and fast and his tone is thick or you know even his clean tone is nice and punchy and clean but he's using 10 to 46 and then when i found out about that i was like okay i yeah. guess it's if it's good enough for him it's going to be good enough for me too right. but i've been using tens for for years yeah and, so can we and it's perfectly fine e flat awesome can can we talk a little bit about uh, just kind of like when he's doing that kind of thing, soloing? There are a few things in songs like that. I mean, it's a bunch of songs where you're playing like clean, pristine, clean, clean sounds. And the kind of like he, he gets into like this thing where it's like almost like sweeping little um, phrases. Um, yeah. That? No. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, what the fuck, man? That, that kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah, so it, again, it took me a long time to figure this thing out, what it was, because I remember as a kid, I was listening to, uh, I think it was a Riviera Paradise. Yeah. And, you know, it's the second big solo that he starts after uh, Reese's piano solo. When he really gets into the... Yeah, I'm 
I'm sloppy right now because it's the morning. So anyway, he 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 he, uh, he did a lot of like partially kind of raking and economy picking. You know, when you kind of roll certain uh -huh. notes Upward. together, uh, like upstroke or downstroke, it could could happen uh, either way. But um, I think when I started to understand the whole concept of this is when I was uh, trying to learn Stang Swang, mm. you know, because that was a, you know, that's his jazz tune, which is his original, actually. So I started kind of with that. Up, up, fall off. <laughs> Well, I'm seeing you like with the upstrokes. You're not really using your wrist to go up. It's more like pulling, pulling your elbow bone across. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of elbow, yeah. No, so I, I was like trying, trying to play a lot with these, like. Just kind of roll them together. So you're going right now it's A minor pentatonic, you're kind of going up, 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 pull off, up. So uh, or something like that. So th those were up. Yep. And then you go, go back down. Sick. Wait a second. So, and right yeah. now, still in that same pickup position? Or for the clean stuff, you kind of switch to neck middle? Yeah, neck middle. Yeah. <laughs> some sort of uh, methodology to what what pickup configuration for what like in your mind how does the switching work like what do you what sounds inside the strat do you gravitate toward how do you sort of match them with the th with the vibe you're going for um uh, well you know well when it comes to stevie and you know his style and his music uh there's a lot of it's a lot of the, the neck pickup going on you know, mm -hmm. I mean, he 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 was running the neck or the neck in the middle quite a lot, but okay. a lot of times, like especially when he was trying to go for the bitey sound, you know, he might be on the neck pickup, but when whenever he gets, yeah. you know, the Albert for King sure. stuff, for sure, he, he, he goes he, immediately down to the bridge pickup. Mm -hmm. You to can get see that. that flick, you know. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot of times he would switch it back. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you really have to pay attention when you of watch course. it. You know, you can, yeah. so, you can so see there's, that. Yeah, that, 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 little, that switch I see, I see all the time, like yeah. to go to, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, yeah. but I get that, right? So it's like sort of like that sort of in, out. so in, in my question, I guess, that would be a strategy for when you're soloing to go from like a thick sound to all of a sudden like you're doing the microtonal bending and you're doing the bitey sound. So that's that game between the bridge and the neck. But how would you like would what would the switching look like for for these like middle positions between these two pickups and these two pickups sort of like how do you conceptualize when to do that? Like what well, does there's, there's really no method or or time or any any rule to it it's kind of a random thing it's like just an example you know when you watch it like a, a hammond b3 player mm -hmm. and they're switching between the slow and fast speed of the leslie right sure. you know they're playing and kind of randomly they're flicking the, the slow and the fast or the stop or whatever it kind of goes that way too like yeah, whatever to kind of whatever, whatever you feel yeah. like you know if, if you feel like you know, you're in this position, you just go there, you know, if you don't like yeah. it, you know, go back. And okay. I, I mess with my tone controls all the time. Yeah. And it's kind of mindless, to be honest, you know, you don't, you don't really think about it. Much. You just want a different sound at a certain point and you're. Yeah. Paying. Yeah. And, and you can even hear Stevie experimenting in, yeah. in some of the songs that, 
that he played on the studio in a certain way with a certain tone and a certain pickup position. And uh, he might have played live in a completely different pickup position and, and, and tone style mm -hmm. and, and everything. So it's, but in terms of like, uh, would you say like songs like Riviera Paradise, Dirty Pool, stuff like that, that tends to be that middle and neck kind of sound? And, and not necessary. Not That's necessary. the thing. Okay. Like yeah. I've, I've, I've heard Stevie uh, starting and playing uh, through all the way through pretty much uh, Riviera, Riviera Paradise on the neck pickup. Mm. Even the intro. <laughs> Right, so but of course the uh, the record version is the that's that's what's more familiar to the ears. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for so. sure. Okay, so back to the sweeping but, question. Uh, mm -hmm. Just sorry, I, I, I just keep thinking about things I want to ask you about. That. So the, the technique. So you were saying you were saying that the thing you were practicing was kind of these patterns. It's like down, up, up. Pull off. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, when you reverse it in between, like. So. That's it. So you're using oh. those downstrokes as a little, like, sustained note. Down, 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 down. Right? Final point. Yeah. 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 yeah that's, that's cool. And that it's it's so cool. And it's very yeah. to me it's very jazzy. Yeah. I feel like he really got this this kind of part, this I call it the Stevie noodling, you know. Yeah. Because he, he used to do that in between songs, right? Blah, 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 and then he slammed into a song eventually. Mm. Like cold shot. Yeah. Like, like like there's a there's a live version from ACL, uh -huh. right? And he just kind of does this little intro noodling kind of thing on the guitar before he uh, goes into the song. And I, I, I'm I, such a geek. I wanted to learn the intro note for note. Even yeah. So it's that. He goes. That's the '89 uh, Austin said limits, right? Sick, dude. So yeah. I'm, I'm crazy. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, don't be sorry. That's awesome. Dude. Yeah, I, I spent quite a lot of time. Guess I got bored too much. Yeah. Do you still check it out, or did, or did you get to like a critical mass where you're just like? Because there's there aren't that many recordings at the end of the day. There are no, a lot. but there are a ton of bootlegs. Yes. And when you listen to bootlegs, every single one of them is different. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they are. I mean, they might be playing the same songs over the same set. Yeah. Uh, not the same way twice. I, I'm right. assuming you're done with the studio albums at this point, though. Like you listen to them for fun, I'm guessing, but you've probably been. Yeah, I mean, you know, once yeah. in a while I still listen to them, and yeah. I still get freaking amazed. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I listen to the real thing, I'm like, oh man, that's like nobody can do that. Yeah. Nobody can do that. No. <laughs> nobody. You can yeah. you can get you know, some elements and you can you can play songs as close as you, you possibly can, but nobody can do what he did. No, no. All right. Well, I mean, I, I, I feel like we've taken up enough of your time and No, you're fine. And, uh, and it's, it's I was I was just gonna recommend if anybody wants to understand this kind of uh, sweep and the, the the economy picking, listen to this song, Stank Swang. Oh yeah, can you can and, you and, can you play some of it for us? Yeah, so um, it's G minor. So he's he's doing this intro right. Uh, Thank mm -hmm. you. 
that's sick. The, uh, it's like a Django thing almost. Yeah. I, I, I'm noticing also in your sweeping that sometimes you're kind of starting the rake before you get to the actual pick notes. Like you're, you're starting. Yeah. Like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It's like a. You know, yeah. Yeah, you can, you can kind of get there with a rake. Yeah, so it, just, it sounds a lot smoother than you know picking picking one note or yeah to play it like that. That's yeah. what I love about Stevie. He just he just had so many tones in 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 that right hand. Yeah, the the chords on top in the beginning it was like this kind of G minor. Yeah, no, it's a oh like a C minor nine. Yeah. 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 And it's very simple. So it's uh, sharp nines and nines. So yeah. So you go. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. Isn't that wonderful? That is cool. That's like a last Montgomery thing. It's kind of, it's kind of, sounds like a spin off on like four, yeah. four on six, right? Yeah, four on six is uh, it's like yeah. the same, same idea, lifted for same key, too. Oh man, so pretty, so, yeah, so pretty. Yeah. yeah, okay. And, well, and you well, know, Stevie really wanted to dig deep into jazz, yeah, he had some plans to, to do that. I'm sure yeah. he would have killed it. Oh, I know. I know he would have. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, okay. So, so can you walk us just through a little bit of that sweeping stuff? So. In song? So that's really. Good. We did that last time. Yeah. And I told you that you have to kind of go along. Like, move along with, a, with your break. So, 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 uh, and, and from then on, you know, once you, once you kind of figure that out, so a lot of times he would like jump back up to so the motion is down slide up. Yeah. Oh, you gotta be so coordinated to get that upstroke with that note. Because this I get. Yeah, you you got it. I think you got Let's it. not get carried away. I don't have it, but I will. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so that he, he does that line there. Just really quick. What's it so, sound like really quick? But he goes, <laughs> he plays it like that. What's and going on there with the picking? With the blues gear. So, straight walk. No, otherwise I get it, but what's happening with the picking? A 
it's part, partially legato, so it's like a uh, full off. Actually. Okay, so th that's a full off. <laughs> and then you can kind of just repeat it an octave lower. So yeah. sick. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, so it's it's definitely a, a hybrid thing. So it's it's got you know alternate legato sweep. <laughs> so um, sick. But but you know, if you can you can kind of analyze that song first and, and get a lot of the elements of the, the, the main riff, especially and some of the solo too, that can teach you a lot of the uh this side of yeah. of this playing, you know. Amazing. Dude, I, I just gotta thank you on behalf of a lot of people on this channel that just like are people you so been writing me like so like Glad how, to help. how kind yeah. you are and like is, with your time and it's just, it's so, we're like, we all feel very lucky to have you, you know? Well, um, thank you. Yeah. And, you know, I want to, I want to tell to everybody, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm here to help. If you have any yeah, trouble, and, and definitely know, like hit up you, Tommy, if you need, if you want like one-on-one, -on -one, like time and lessons, I know you teach, uh, you know, online. Yeah. And, uh, we'll set, like, we'll, we'll put contact for you and for your content and all that stuff down below in the description. So click there. Uh, and we'll see you next time and learn some pride and joy. Let's do that. I look Thank forward to that. Thank you so much, man. Absolutely. My pleasure. I'll talk to you soon.